we like to thank take a minute to thank our partners make trade sweden on the go companion stockholm uh, is the place where i work uh, as a business advisor and devrel events where my co director ule works um and that's the team for startup grind stockholm myself ule jens is our mentor he runs the hong kong chapter and we have amanda who takes uh, the responsibility for social media and marina who is helping us with the community building hi and welcome to startup grind stockholm thank you so much for being here um we were just wondering uh, par you have such extensive experience in uh, startup ecosystems in helping startups reach their dream destinations or their ambitions um how did it all start let's start somewhere over there like tell us a bit about yourself your background education professional journey which led you to this uh, great uh, place yeah let's uh, give you some ideas of who i am um so i'm an, um, some sort of engineer an electronic engineer i went to stockholm school of economics for an mba and then i i thought i was going to be a researcher so i moved on to ucla to doctor program but that uh, showed up to be pretty boring so after a couple of years I, i left los angeles and moved back to sweden this was 1981 okay so then i worked um, in sweden as ceo for tech companies for 19 years wow. mainly mid-sized companies 2 300 employees and usually deep tech companies i also set up some companies in russia to manufacture electronics for the russian car industry and um Yeah, I've been sort of running companies all my life up until 99 and um, keen skier, um, especially freestyle. I'm sort of adventure type also lived in Chamonix for some time and and been into parachuting and climbing and, and all that stuff. So um yeah, that's a little bit about, about me. Okay. So um and, and where did the seeds of starting uh, something like Sting and your later ventures how did that lead because because you said a very interesting thing that research became boring for you after 2 years I've had a career in research myself so I've always tried to balance the creative and analytical side and sometimes the creative side takes over um but where uh, then it was like late 90s that you thought about starting something yeah it was <clears throat> um i mean big things in life are not planned um uh, you can okay. plan where you're going to go on holiday and things like that and, mm-hmm. and uh, um, but the big things shift in life usually happen uh, for some reason so 1999 i had just left a big job uh, with a turnaround project for a large uh, company with several daughter companies and i was a little bit sort of fed up with that uh, managing large co- companies Okay. So I had a summer in between. This was the summer of 1999 where I got the possibility to think about what will be my next step. And then I decided during that summer that no I will not go into a new sort of established company again which I had been doing for many years. So I decided that summer to now I'm going to go back to the roots of business which is entrepreneurship. Um I've always been entrepreneurial uh, and like not like being in big on an organization so the summer that 99 I started a sweat equity firm together with a friend and started work with tech startups with laser technology microelectronics mm-hmm. uh, backbone telecom and things like that and that was 1999 um so since that I have worked with startups uh, the name startup was not existing 99 Uh-huh. but but i worked with 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 startups full time since 99 okay now, and when did sting came into picture uh, the, was the name sting from the start or like what were the founding uh, yeah yeah <clears throat> though this sting i started that 2002 and and the reason was that there was a foundation the electron foundation in shista which is a science park outside stockholm mm. they wanted to um, grow new startups in that area because ericsson was dominating it all and they asked me if i could help them to come up with an idea how to breed a new under vegetation of tech startups 
So mm-hmm. this was 2001. And I took that as a, an assignment and went around the world to find out what have other countries done. So I spent quite a lot of time in Israel, 2001, okay. and in the UK also, a little bit in, in, in Holland, and I lived in the US before. And mm-hmm. after that, I came up with this idea to build a system supporting the birth and growth of tech companies. And then we launched that in January 2002. Uh, and the name Sting was not there uh, from uh-huh. the beginning. It was called uh, Shista Innovation and Growth. But we changed it a couple of years later to Stockholm Innovation and Growth. And then we come up with the abbreviation, which is Sting. So, But it started in, in the science park Shista outside Stockholm 2002. Wow, wow. So so she so there was an external factor that came in and kind of pushed you toward yep. developing things. So so that goes with your uh, saying, which was big things are not planned. So it was not on the plan, it was not on the radar for you. No, nope, that's something right. from outside. Okay. Yeah. That's that's really good. And you also um, I think that's also a very interesting lesson that you that you mentioned that when you got this assignment of doing something you actually looked around and you said that you went to Israel, yeah. uh, UK, and US. Because uh, that's a very important lesson for startups here as well. Because when you come up with an idea, it's very important to validate, to research around, to see what are the competitions, uh, what is the competition doing. And then uh, that kind of strengthens your own faith in your idea, I believe. Um, about that point, at that time, between Israel, UK, US, where was Stockholm? Like, where were we in terms of where we are like much lower, much higher? Like what was the ecosystem like for startups when you visited these three countries and compared Stockholm? There was no ecosystem whatsoever in Stockholm at that time. Okay. And, and Stockholm was 100% dominated by large corporates. Um, okay. Telecom companies. So, but around 2000, a couple of, of, of um, companies was born, mainly related to, to, the telecom sector. And then, of course, we had the dot-com boom and crash 2002, mm. which also was um, starting a lot of activities. But but compared to especially Israel, uh, there was no systematic approach whatsoever. And, and, and at that time, Israel was one of the few countries in the world that had, uh, they had designed actually more or less the support system for startups um, one of the few countries that, that did that late 90s and um, and i was quite fascinated by their their approach uh, mm-hmm. and that is the approach that we have used in sting over these almost 20 years and that is a what i call a system approach which is to try to design supporting components in the startup ecosystem that are needed uh, and operate some of them on your own and make sure that others operate other parts of the components, but that they are designed with a system approach. And that, that's what we have done actually over the years. We, we operate components that are core for us. Then we initiate activities and components that we don't think are the core business for us but we initiate them, and then others are operating them. Okay, so so you are a creator uh, as well as a catalyst. So you create some o- own initiatives which can extend the uh, Sting ecosystem, and then you initiate things uh, which can then be taken over by others. And yeah. there, I think, uh, I would like to, or the audience would like to know about several other initiatives which are connected. So there are like, Sting Business Angels, Sting Capital, Sub 46 things. So if you can take us through a little bit on how the thinking yeah. process has been around this and what each component is doing in the ecosystem. Uh, yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, and as I said, we had this system approach, not necessarily to operate and manage everything on our own. Um, so the birth was 2002 of, of what today is Sting. And, and already 2003, we realized that the first investors in, in companies are angels. So we started our first angel network in 2003, okay. which was one of the first professional angel networks in Sweden. 
And uh, several of the members are still very active. For instance, Jane Wallerud, which mm-hmm. is, is the mother of Caroline Wallerud, uh, okay. <laughs> which you, you will have on Start of a Grind. And, and, and Volumental is one sting company, by the way. And, and also okay. Karma. Karma is a sting company. So the Business Angel Network we started in 2003 was an important component at that time, which has led up to later components I will come back to. Um, 2005, we started our first early pre-seed uh, venture capital fund, Sting Capital, with 8 million uh-huh. euro. Okay. Um, and that gave us a lot of experience to later on... Um, start other uh, venture capital funds, which I all will come back to. 2008, we launched a recruitment service. Um, we realized that one of the key components in an ecosystem is talents, mm. uh, perhaps more than, than money. Uh, and we wanted to create support to our startups to find talents to recruit um, key persons. So we started a recruitment support organization in 2008. And this is today Sweden's largest um, recruiting organization for startups. We usually recruit sort of 100, 150 people per, per year. Um, okay. So it's a large sort of recruitment organization. 2009, we, we launched something called Sting Day, which is a boutique investor event for um, startups and and investors all over Europe, it's totally no profit, not commercial, uh, very exclusive. And this is a premium event for us to connect to investors all over Europe. And 2002, we started the first accelerator in the Nordics. Um, 2012, um, this was the first accelerator uh, in the Nordic, 2012. Okay. Um, And through that accelerator, we've had Quite a number of interesting companies go through, like Selpi, acquired by mm-hmm. HM, Karma, AppJobs, Ermi, All Ears, and, and many, many more. And, and um, it was, you mentioned, and I'm, well, that was good. Thank you for that. That this accelerator was this year also um, awarded a prize, which we're really proud of. 2013, we had. 2012, we came over an interesting co-working space in San Francisco called Rocket Space. Uh And my idea, as as you mentioned earlier, I have always been to find bits and pieces all over the world and see if we can integrate it into Sweden. So this Rocket Space was a really cool co-working space started in downtown San Francisco. And and I was at 2011 and and realized we need to have something like this in Stockholm. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that led up to the initiation and, and co-funding of, of the first professional co-working space uh, for startups in Stockholm, which is called Sub46. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and we launched that 2013. Um, a year later, we launched a really interesting angel investment platform, very much uh, modeled on the original Y Combinator. Okay, uh, and this Propel Capital is today a the largest pre- private uh, seed investor in Sweden, doing twenty five investments per year. Um, and is it linked to Sting, or uh, what's the link between uh, the Propel Capital and Sting? it's linked to Sting? So we have started it, we have uh, uh, attracted all the angels, and we manage it on behalf of the angels. Okay. So, so the angels invest in Propel, we invest the money in Sting companies, and then the angels do the follow-on investments. Okay, so, so but, but it's linked to Sting companies. The, yeah. It only invests in Sting companies. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. okay. And um, a year later, 2015, we launched the second co-working space in Stockholm called Things, which is like Sub46, but focusing more on deep tech and mm-hmm. internet of things and things like that. Um, and 2016, we launched something called Ignite Sweden, which is a matchmaking organization for corporates and startups. Um, we had worked with that a couple of years before um, with Instinct um, under a brand name Team Up, and that led to the formation of Ignite, which today is Europe's largest 
matchmaking organization for matching corporates' need with with um, innovations from startups. Um, and a year later, we started in the third co-working space, H2, um, focused on digital health. Um, we also launched an incubator for bioeconomy in another part of Sweden called Bio Sting Bioeconomy. The initiative came not from us there, but from mm-hmm. actors in that part of Sweden. And um, we also launched a venture capital fund, Lumina Ventures, um, 2018. Um, uh, which is a traditional venture capital fund, actually, uh, with 60 million euro under management. So we worked a lot with that, attracting both team and money. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of um, things that had been going on. So, so these are very interesting components because you had uh, you have somewhere help startups or you went into the talent space, then you went into the funding space. Uh, corporate matchmaking space had the concept of uh, uh, staying day and then several levels of uh, so three levels of co-working uh, models out of all this um, if i may ask like what you think is the core need that startups like where the startup in, in these years where do you think stockholm startups struggle the most is it the capital or is it the network access? Is it that they don't get early uh, support and build up process? Where is the issue, you think? Or gap? Well, it, it, it has changed during the years. Um, if, if we take right now, uh, for the majority of startups right now, the first investment capital for these early stage companies is in reality, not a big problem. There's quite a lot of money early stage now in Stockholm. It was not like that six, seven years ago. But today, I would say it's, it's there's quite a lot of money around. It's, but in one sector, it is still a problem. Okay. So, so when it comes to deep tech companies, companies with complex technology solving really big needs with a long time to develop a prototype or, or things mm-hmm. like that. It could be energy technology, it could be biotechnology and things like that. There we still have a funding gap um, in Sweden. So that I, I say is, is, is one problem or gap. Um, another um problem or, or challenge and, and that has been the case for many many years is of course that Sweden is a tiny tiny little market way up north mm. um, so it's it's re- extremely important that companies started here scale internationally very quick if you're in a big market like Germany or UK you can usually build your revenue a little bit quicker on the domestic market which is Mm-hmm. more challenging here so the, the the sort of the possibilities to attract international customers to scale quick is a challenge um, and to do that you need to focus on sales um, and and i think the focus on sales we sometimes lack and uh, we're mm-hmm. good on on technology and development but but sometimes Compared to especially the U.S., um, Swedish companies are not always as focused on sales uh, and, and creating sort of early customers um, with this and sending invoices. Uh, so I, I think that, that is something we still um, have some challenges with. Um, and, and on the other hand, the, the relations now with corporates have, have been become much better the last five, six years, partly due to Ignite. But but there is still a, a problem with the relations between startups and corporates in Europe in general compared to the US. Okay. So, so you think that deep tech is a space where uh, more focus is needed. Then yeah. you mentioned that Sweden being not a very big population base, it makes scaling a challenge locally. So it's good to yeah. scale rapidly outside Sweden. Uh, and then 
the focus on sales. That's very interesting because many startups, because uh, we work uh, at Companion, we work a lot with early stage startups. So startups are kind of perfecting their product a lot before they hit the customer. So you kind of overbuild the product and then you at time find out, oh shit, that kind of build was not needed. So reverse that. So, so you advise that it's good to have a very early sales focus in the startup. Yeah, and to to sort of even even to the extent that you actually co-develop your prototypes or MVPs together with potential customers. Um, never ever try to develop in the garage. <laughs> okay, it's, okay. It's, it's much better to try to engage a couple of potential customers in your product development process uh, as soon as possible. Because if you develop something that fits their needs, then you have your first customer. And if, for example, that product is for the business side, you think an initiative like Ignite Sweden is a great place to have something like that because then yeah. you have a cost. Okay, so the success rate could be higher if you co-develop something with a large player. So that's that's an interesting insight for the startups listening in. Um, brilliant insights. Uh, let's jump a little bit into Sting and uh, kind of go a little bit into how you help startups. Is it like um, what stage, for example, you take in uh, for the startups? Uh, is it just limited to Stockholm or rest of Sweden? Some basic things on Sting, if we can take on. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we're, we're a very strange animal. Uh, we're a really <laughs> strange animal. Uh, we're, we're, a, we're an independent, non-profit company always on the entrepreneur side, uh, even many years after leaving Sting. Um, but we're not a private venture capital company, and we're not a public actor. So we're uh -huh. right between an, an independent and no profit, but we act very, very business-like all the time. So we are supporting 25 to 30 startups per year, new ones every year. Uh, they are admitted to Sting's incubator or accelerator. And these two are our core program, the incubator and the accelerator. Um, and those who are admitted, they are always more or less free revenue, usually two, three persons. They usually have a brilliant idea to solve a big international problem. And they're a, a team of two, three persons. And our goal is to turn out 25 growth companies per year. So we have only one goal with Instinct to sort of uh, turn out 25 new companies per year. And that we have done now for 19 years. Um, but we're really selective. We have added four, four, five, six hundred years per year. And then we admit 30 rounds uh, of them to either the accelerator or the incubator. And the accelerator is a four or five month program. The incubator can be between 12 and 24 months long, depending on, on uh, if it's deep tech or whatever it is. Um, but the incubator is the core program. But, uh, how would you differentiate between the accelerator and incubator, like a company coming to you, yep. which is a better fit? Is it a particular sector, as you were saying, if it's deep tech, or something which takes more time? How do you kind of... Breakout, like yeah, this that's is a good question. Company, this is a that's a good question. Um, first, the accelerator is for companies that have they have launched something in the market, okay, or are launching within a month, because the accelerator program is to help the companies with digital scaling. So if you if you haven't launched, if the launch of the product to the market is eight months from now, then it's too mm -hmm. early for accelerator. Uh, the other differentiator is that the accelerator is mainly only for digital companies. If, if you're doing a battery technology company, you should not enter the accelerator. Okay. Uh, doing a new satellite technology company, you should not be into the accelerator. So it's, it's okay. digital, digital scaling. The, the incubator is for companies usually with more complex technologies, longer lead times to develop a, a prototype or, or the first service and could, could be up to tw two years. And there we have 
solar cell technology, we have microsatellite systems, we have new battery technology, biotech, medtech, and things like that. So it, it's, yeah, it's more complex technologies and the accelerator is more ex- digital. But you said uh, that uh, generally you accept free revenue companies. Uh, yeah. Do you still accept free revenue in accelerator model or in yeah. accelerator? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if companies are coming to us and say, we have a, a million euro revenue, we'd like to come to your accelerator too late. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's usually pre-revenue or at sort of the edge of creating some revenue. They might have some, but if they have lots of revenue, then it's a scale-up company and that's too late for us. Okay. Uh, Then in startups, especially in uh, tech startups, you have a stage which is the MVP stage. Is it? So pre-revenue, I understand. But what if a startup is in a stage that they are, in the process of MVP, and there's another startup which has completed MVP and is started testing, which is most likely to more likely to get into staying between these two, like somebody who is working on the MVP maybe at an early stage, and somebody who has finished up or kind of ready to finish up the MVP. Is there something a consideration there? No, not really. If if I had to like that, I would choose the one with the most fantastic team. Okay. <laughs> okay, so team is an important factor. Yeah, uh, extremely. Okay, and uh, does Sting, okay, with the entire digitalization with coronavirus, I don't know how your programs uh, are working right now. What kind of time commitment do you li- look for when a company applies to Sting or is wanting to be a part of Sting, for example? If it's the accelerator program, uh, which we have two per year, one in the spring and one in the fall, so usually eight companies per half year, then um, um, you commit yourself to, 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 you have to be two or three persons, you have a legal company, and you need to work full time with that. Uh, And you have to be physically, at least before the pandemic here in Mm -hmm. Stockholm. and we invest in all the companies in the accelerator from Propel Capital. So they get 50 uh, K euro, 50,000 K euro um, in, as an investment from Propel Capital, um, all accelerator companies. The incubator, while well, you have to be two, three persons, you have a company and you need to work full time with that and have decided that this will is going to be my future. Uh, we are not working with, with cases and companies where they're sort of trying to explore if this is going to be the future. You must have decided, yes, I'm going to build this. I'm going to build a big company uh, and have that vision and commitment. Then, then we're all in. So entrepreneurs need to have their skin in the game and yeah. there has to be a team, there has to be an incorporated company. And in that case, it's a, is there a particular company format that you accept? Because uh, there are many ways to form a company. In it's a Swedish legal AB. Okay, so it has to be an AB with two yeah. to three people yeah. all committed. And then in yeah. case of accelerator, you are saying that your arm, which, your arm, which is uh, proper capital that yeah. goes in. And, yeah. and is there, uh, so this is a question which came out, not uh, from the, uh, today's discussion, but somewhere else from a different entrepreneur group. That was like, is there a particular requirement on how the, it's the startup uses that capital that it receives from Sting? Is it, uh, or can it can they pay salaries out of it, for example, or pay consultants yeah, out of can, it? Yeah, they can, yeah. They, they can use it for whatever is needed in the company, but, but they cannot buy a new car. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but 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 otherwise, uh, it, it it's going to be used to build the company. Uh, okay, understood. No, no restrictions uh, to that, but 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 the car would not be okay. Okay, in your discussion, you you were saying that uh, before pandemic, physical requirement and all, and then coming to pandemic. Remember when we started our chat, Ule was on that topic. He was discussing that how has the year changed your model. So during this pandemic, so staying being an uh, accelerator and incubator uh, support to startups, ha- has your business model or the way of working with startups changed over this year? And what do you think is going to happen 
in the next year or the time that comes? <clears throat> Well, our support have not really changed more than we have uh, we have converted to digital format, um, and and uh, some of that have actually become better. For instance, the access to first meeting with investors has actually become greater. It's easier uh-huh. to get meetings uh, with international investors um, today than it was a year ago. Um, so to some extent, the accessibility to persons have, have increased during the pandemic. Um, our own support in terms of business coaching, I think it, it in general, it, it's probably not better because some of these really sort of critical discussions, you need a whiteboard, you need to sit down and, and, and look one in the eyes to, to see what's really going on here. So some of our support um, perhaps have not been better, but, but many of the things we've been doing is has worked pretty well, actually, uh, in a digital format. So we, we will continue uh, with some of the parts uh, even in the future, not everything, but some of the parts. Um, then, of course, some of our companies, some of the sectors have been badly hit. We, I think we have sort of 20% of our alumni companies are in sectors that are hit long-term, and they will okay. probably never, ever uh, succeed. I mean, like hospitality and travel and things like that. That's sectors that... Mm, they will have difficulties even even uh, in the long run. Um, and as always, uh, those companies that are quickly to adapt to these, they have survived. Those who have been slower in adapting, they have had greater problems. It, 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 it's like the evolution. The, it, the possibility to adapt is, mm-hmm. is the success way. Um, and then, of course, there are some sectors that I think we will see uh, more interest uh, within from investors and others, and uh, both the sustainability sector. Okay. Where we're, I mean, we're doing lots of things in that area for the climate sector, but also the digital uh, health area. Um, I mean, many countries have discovered or will discover that the cost of care will skyrocket in the future and the aging population so we need to transform into digital care much more okay. uh, so i think digital health with also will, will be a future interesting together with sustainability tech. Mm. very interesting so for startups uh, i think the core message uh, um, the core that i learned from here is that one part of pandemic is that accessibility has uh, kind of improved uh, that we have seen even uh, when we are coaching startups because uh, in a shorter time you can do more meetings but then you are saying that certain parts of a meeting which is more interactive which needs physical interaction kind of going through numbers together on a whiteboard that goes down completely agreed uh, but that's a very key message for startup what you said about adaptability it's like how swift are you able to adapt in the and then that's not only startups that gets also about scale up like how soon can you adapt your model uh, and then you have said that sustainability and digital health uh, are two of the key things and on sustainability you are running a program uh, climate action how has the yeah. response been to that uh, initiative uh, amazing we we um, um we uh, launched uh, in in the spring uh, um, uh, so a challenge driven ideation uh, uh, activity all over europe based on uh, sustainable development goal number 13 the climate goal mm. and we had um, 13 climate champions addressing one specific climate challenge uh, so we had 13 challenges and in a couple of weeks we had 284 applications um, saying that we will solve one of these challenges. And okay. we boiled that down to 180 during the summer. And then we made a boot camp in September for 49 startups from all over Europe addressing climate um, challenges. And we now have 
boil that down to around six or seven that will start in our new launched climate accelerator program that we will launch in February. So we will have a specific accelerator for climate companies um, with six or seven companies starting there in February. So that will be in addition to your current incubator and acceleration programs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to the acceleration and uh, incubation program, is there any other way the startups can get help from staying? Coaching support or something? Yeah, yeah. actually, um, as you say, the, the accelerator and incubator are sort of the, sort of the core programs. We do have two other um, activities. One is called open coaching. Open coaching, <laughs> totally free. You can sign up on our website, and it's it's a 30, 45-minute meeting with one of our coaches just to ask a question. Um, it's like going to, to the primary care. Uh, I, I have some problems. Uh, I would like to discuss this with my doctor. So you can you can sign up for an open coaching meeting um, anytime uh, via our website and, and meet one of our qualified coaches. That's called open coaching. Um, then we have another activity called test drive Mm -hmm. is a program free of charge no strings attached for people who have an idea to perhaps start a company they work together they are friends or or they know each other and they're they are thinking about perhaps starting a company they can apply to our test drive program which is um, five six evening workshops during two months and during that program, we help them to come to a private um, decision that, yes, this I'm going to do, or I'm not going to do this. This was a lousy idea. Uh, I don't dare to do this. Or, yes, mm-hmm. I will do this. I will go home and quit my job. <laughs> okay. So that's the test drive program. Brilliant. So so open coaching and test drives are for those who are pre-incubator or pre-accelerated. And, that's right. And they can get your that's support. Right. And then accelerator and incubator programs have a deal flow of around 500 leading to 25 companies yeah. going out of that process. Brilliant. Uh, before we turn to, so for audience, if you have questions about uh, Sting and um, and entrepreneurship in general about the entire ecosystem that Par has been discussing, please post them and we'll pick them in a couple of minutes. Uh, I just wanted to have a, a very... If, when you look at today's entrepreneurs who, who are trying to create these game, like the word game changing ventures with high scalability, what are what would you say to them? Is there any piece of advice which you think is very crucial in these times for entrepreneurs going forward who are now creating new ideas, ventures? How should they start to form the teams? What's the best way to approach startups? Is there any sector? Yeah. So I just throw that lump to you and just see, expect maybe something comes back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if if you have an ambition to build mm-hmm. a big company, mm-hmm. if if that is your vision, of course the starting point is you must identify a big growing problem. Okay. If you don't have a big growing important problem, then you can never be build a big company, and there must be big need somewhere. That is more problematic in the consumer sector because how, who knew that they wanted an iPhone? But in the B2B sector, it, it, it's so easy to identify problems and challenges. So big, growing international problem or need is, I think, uh, started. Um, after that, um, well, the team, um, you need to be uh, two, three persons. I mean, startups is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. It's a team sport. So you need to be a couple of persons that are totally aligned and share the same vision and and, and have the same beliefs about the culture of the company and have the uh, sort of the motivational factors to work with this for 10, 15 years uh, because it usually takes 10 years uh, to build a big company. Uh, so you need to have that uh, set up mentally um, and the motivational factors because then you'll learn everything you need uh, and you will attract other people. But sort of the problem, uh, the team is, is sort of the key things. And then the third thing is, of course, well, you probably must have some sort of innovative solution to this problem. 
um, it doesn't need to be patentable, but 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 some sort of innovation that is cre- can create some barriers to entry or something around that. Um, so I would say, big market, strong team, innovative solution, um, and focus on sales. <laughs> focus on sales. So brilliant. Big growing international problem, two to three people uh, who are passionate about it, have the same value structure or vision about it, want to run with it for a minimum of 10 years. The solution needs to be different enough for you to survive or have an advantage in the market. Great. And of course, the the first thing probably, yeah, uh, to be passionate about sales. So without sales, nothing will fly. Great exactly. insights. We now turn to some of uh, the questions with audience are posing. Marina, can you come in? Uh, audience, we'll take 10 seconds. We'll bring Marina in and we'll rope in some of the questions which you have been raising. Uh, let's see. Hello, Hello, Marina. Welcome. Thank you. Hi to both. And thank you for your great discussion over all this bits and pieces of the ecosystem that Pear built. Really interesting to hear. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm here collecting the questions and we have a few coming up. So maybe I can just start. So we give it a fair yeah, chance. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, so we have um, Yami at... Um, a question about um, money are there in the ecosystem, but how do you start to, um, where do you start if you have never done this before to get access to this funding? Um, I'm not sure I understood to get access to what funding. Um, if you if you want to start somewhere with a company or a startup idea and you know that uh, you need capital and you know, uh, based on what you said and other people uh, sharing in other events we had, there is this idea that the system is full with money or there is a l- enough money in the system, yeah. but how do you access it as a first time ah. or a beginner maybe? Got it. There's a, uh, several, in, in Stockholm, there's several um, actors uh, you can um, connect with to, to um, a- access uh, financing. Um, there's a, other incubators. We are one of them. There are other incubators uh, through which you can access angels and investors. There's a public organization called Almi. Uh, they have soft loans and grants that are really interesting. Um, there's also organizations like Connect, which is a, an organization um, helping startups connect with, with business angels. Um, there's also a couple of other business angel initiatives in Stockholm uh, that you can connect with and, and apply to be a member and through them access angels. So business angels is usually the key thing uh, early stage before that, it, it's public money, and that's usually Almi or even a, a public organization called Vinova. They have grants for, for companies also. Right. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, then we have Vera who asks, um, why is it assumed that if the founders are, not, are only working part-time with their idea, uh, they're not fully committed to their startups? How is the thinking behind that? Um, well, this is this is uh, our um, uh, standpoint uh, in Sting, so to say. We want uh, we only admit companies and people who are have decided this is what I'm I'm really going to do. Uh, we don't want them to have an other agenda uh, because we want them to be all in, as we are. Uh, we're we're uh, supporting them massive and then we expect them to be 100% committed to their idea and not to also another idea. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we have Michael and Bio both asked, um, what is the future of ad tech? Most attractive, useful subjects are our yeah. group children to corporate investors. Everything is. Yeah. <clears throat> the ad tech area is really interesting we have done quite a lot in that 
uh, area the last two or three years. We have had a special test drive program for EdTech. And I think the pandemic have uh, increased the activity in the EdTech sector. Um, we're, we're, I think we're just in the beginning of, of seeing more and more really interesting new innovative ed tech solutions. Um, you can see how quick the universities have changed from physical education to digital transformation of, of the content. So I think uh, the ed tech sector uh, is interesting, but it has a problem. Uh, some parts of, of that sector have, have a problem or challenge, and that is it's still partly uh, uh, looking for public uh, customers. The, the, the customers are, are not always, but sometimes the public sector. And, and getting into the public sector and getting that as a customer is usually more complicated and takes longer time. So if you have an end tech company uh, addressing the customer, the consumer directly, that is usually a quicker way to the market. Um, so, it, but but in general, I think it's a really interesting area. Wait, so keep going, guys, uh, on that uh, you know thread. And uh, we have a question from Burial who asks uh, if there are any internships opportunity within Sting when it comes to business development or investments. Is there such a thing like an internship with you? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we have interns uh, uh, by then, absolutely. Uh, that happens, uh, yes. Great, then he needs to check with you then. <laughs> and then we have a question from Daniel, who's uh, wondering, uh, they have a brilliant startup, um, you know, uh, startup going on uh, already in the climate sector, and they wonder if there is an opportunity to jump in. They have a great solid team, and based on what you said, they seem to be eligible for this program you started. And they wonder, is there a chance to add new startups or how does that work? Yeah, it's still, I think we have, um, we have two um, sort of uh, slots left. Uh, we have, I think, decided for four or five and we have one or two more slots left for, for the Climate Accelerator in February. So it is still open. Yes, that's correct. Great. Then best of luck, Daniel. I've read about your description. It sounds really interesting. And uh, we have a question from Joel, who's asking, can huge amounts of early adopters, signups, ever be as good as sales? Please repeat. Um, in, you mentioned that it's very important with the sales um, in the, you know, to get in uh, into these programs. But would early adopter signups be as good as sales? Or is sales not the same as maybe signups, for example? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's, it's, there are different ways of, of selling. And digital selling and scaling is, is one thing, and that's a specific uh, challenge or competence. Um, and then it's sort of personal selling that you sometimes need to also be uh, good at. We have training programs for uh, training our companies in, in becoming good at, at sales. Uh, if you're young and, and unexperienced, we will train you in becoming good in selling. We have also really good coaching in uh, digital scaling uh, from people who have done that in big companies before. So you don't need to be excellent from the very beginning in these sectors, uh, but you must have an interest in doing that. Um, if, if the majority of the team wants to sit in the garage and develop and not talk to customers, then we will have a problem. Yep, fair enough. And we have a question from Char Charlotte, who's asking, um, I guess it was on the line of, uh, of what you were talking about. So how do, do you at Sting connect the companies in your incubator and accelerator to networks that can help them with testing the product internationally and eventually sell and finding channels for international markets. So I guess you pretty much just answered that, that you have a way to. Yeah, we have, and, and we do also have partners in a couple of countries. So, so for instance, in the southern part of Germany, you have partners that we can help scaling and attracting customers in, in, in Germany. We have the same thing in, in the UK. So yeah, we can support with that. Sounds great. 
And um, let's see, there was a question coming here. Somebody had applied for Zcan, had applied for the accelerator program with Singh uh, in the area of e-commerce and sustainability. And uh, I guess the idea didn't go through and he was just wondering if you have any advice when you get rejected. Um, can it be that the vision was not understood or is it is it worth to keep testing to communicate your vision or what would you advise if you get rejected again, I guess is the question. It is always advisable to continue. Um, I mean, there is every batch we have sort of 150 applications and we select eight or six. So um, sometimes you're you're not in the right phase. You might have uh, another six months before you can be in the right phase. So so you can apply again. We have some, several companies that have applied a couple of times and then finally they, they got in because they they have achieved what we think was needed so so please keep on definitely yeah um, th- those are the questions for now i guess we are uh on time so we can wrap this yeah. up thank you so much Pierre. very interesting yeah uh, pat thank you so much uh, if you could uh, just offer one last piece uh, of advice or uh, hope or how you see it do you think with all these initiatives that you have put in place and how and and you were you were mentioning in early 90s the word startup was not there and then stockholm has built up really uh, a, a huge name in global ecosystems or the startups market do you think there is still something missing in stockholm or uh, is it something that still needs to be plugged or fixed yeah yeah well um as I said, I would say three things that I'm sort of looking forward to, to, to see. One is better possibilities to, to finance deep tech companies, a large sums of money in really complex, uh, high-risk things. That, that is, is, is still an issue. I also would like to see more of the Swedish corporates much more active in the startup sector and starting acquiring companies. Um, and now too many companies are still acquired by U.S. companies. It would be much better for Europe if European corporates uh, started a- acquiring companies to a larger scale as they do in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third thing would, would be, which we already see, but I would like to see more of it, is, is that even higher presence of international investors in Stockholm because they help our companies scale international. Okay. Brilliant. We'll we'll close the session with those three notes, a deep tech, corporate acquisitions, and in, international investors. Maybe we touch those topics when, when we have Anna from, uh, who is the mayor of Stockholm with us on 22nd January. But for today, Pat, thank you so much for being here, for taking everybody through your own journey, how Sting has been around with all the initiatives you have created with really concrete examples for entrepreneurs to build startups. So really, really thankful to you and Sting for that. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Good to have you. Thank you so much for everybody joining in. And do join our session on uh, 12th January with Kalorin Walirud. Uh, Volumental has been a Sting company. Marina, thank you for being here. Amanda and Ule from Startup Grind. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Yay. <laughs>